Dune was a visual spectacle. That was like an art director's wet dream. And the whole time I'm watching this movie, I'm like, Jesus, Oscar Isaac's beard looks amazing. What's up, GQ? I'm Matty Conrad. I am a men's grooming expert. Today, we're gonna dissect some of the world's finest celebrity beards. Now let's face it, not everybody looks better with a beard. I have guys ask me every single day if they should grow a beard or not. Let's look at some of these celebrities and decide whether or not a beard is the best look for them. Now these are just my opinion as somewhat of a beard grooming expert. Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa has a slightly straighter, more kind of wavy beard. A lot of guys, when they grow those wavy beards out, have kind of a pirate vibe to them because they have a little bit more kind of shimmy, they're a little bit more PC and scraggly. But what I love about Jason Momoa's beard is that it completely suits the rest of his look because he really does kind of look like a pirate. I don't think I could picture Jason Momoa with a really well-tuned up and outlined beard. I think this whole thing suits his aesthetic very, very well. He rides motorbikes, he likes to get dirty, he likes to do activities and climbing stuff. He's a very physical guy. But a lot of these kinds of longer, straighter beards are going to have a more triangular shape just by their nature. It's really hard to get straighter hair to look more square. So it's a really nice way to use the texture of his hair to grow into a shape that's complementary to his face. I I can't even picture Jason Momoa without a beard now. It's such a part of his identity, and I think that he definitely, definitely looks better with a beard. I mean, this is one of those times where both are very handsome, but one of them looks like Jason Momoa. Oscar Isaac. I mean, Oscar Isaac is somebody that could go either way. He looks great without a beard, he looks great with a beard. But if I had to pick my preference and my favorite, I'm gonna go with a beard. I am biased, I'm such a fan of his beard. It was my favorite part of that movie. Here's the thing about Oscar Isaac's beard. He keeps it in a very consistent shape. He understands what shape is going to suit his face best. He has got a much more squared out shape because his face shape is slightly more of what we would consider kind of inverted triangle. So it's a little narrower at the bottom and a little wider at the top. So having that long, strong, square beard at the bottom really helps balance out his shape, gives him a very square overall appearance, which we kind of interpret as very handsome. I also really appreciate how he's embraced the way it turns a little bit salt and peppery and a little bit gray. A lot of guys will color their beard when the gray starts coming in because they're a little worried that it ages them, but before you know it, it looks like their beard has been drawn on by a magic marker. In 2019, you can see his beard's really quite dark. He's starting to get a little bit of salt and pepper into the sides, but it's a flawless shape for his face. A little bit leaner into like 2020, you know, when he wants to dress up, when he wants to go to a, a nice event, which is still a very good shape for him. But I think in contrast to how he looked for Dune in 2021, hands down, this is one of my favorite looks as far as a full beard goes. And that nice consistent salt and pepper look can look really, really sharp in a beard without having to go through all the coloring. Nick Offerman. This is a guy that redefined facial hair for men in this last decade. Nick Offerman is a great example of how important the relationship between beard shape and face shape is. Growing a beard out is not just necessarily about letting everything grow in all directions. It does require some sorts of shaping. The real reason we have beards in the first place is to complement and strengthen the look of the jaw. You have maybe what he was wearing in about 2018. I'm pretty sure he did this for a role. Everything is just grown out in all directions. It's not very lean on the sides. It doesn't have a lot of strong jaw-like shape to it. So it's not, in my opinion, the most flattering thing for him. But when he starts to change the shape of that up, especially into maybe 2019 or even into 2020, when he took the sides a lot leaner, he's got a stronger baseline and all the length is sitting at the chin, it gives him a really strong masculine representation. He looks like a very strong jaw. And to me, this is more Nick Offerman's vibe. Because at the very core, I think that a beard has to match your personality just as much as it matches your face shape or your texture. You know, I really like Nick Offerman with a beard. I've seen him without a beard. It looks a little more youthful and looks a little bit softer, but there's something about a beard that really enhances the look of Nick Offerman's face. To me, he is the beard. James Harden. Now, when it comes to beards, it's not just about the Hollywood elite. Sometimes we're looking at sports celebrities and you can't talk about sports and beards without mentioning the name James Harden. 
James Harden was drafted in 2009, and he was relatively clean shaven at the time. In 2010, he started growing a beard, and as far as I can tell, he never looked back. He is absolutely committed to this look, and I think it really suits him. On a lot of other guys that I see with beards in the NBA, they keep them a little more tailored and a little more well-groomed, but Harden seems to let his grow really wild and woolly, and I kind of love that, because it, I think really intimidates the other players. It's a big beard to have coming at you. And I've seen this done in other sports like rugby and like soccer where guys will grow these big beards in an attempt to be more imposing, in an attempt to be more confident looking and more aggressive looking. Really important that when you are wearing a beard that has that kind of density and you let things get a little wild, that you balance that out somehow with something that is groomed. In his case, it's his like meticulous braids, it's his perfect lineups. He always has a really nice clean fade. So it's a great way to kind of create a juxtaposition between the two that overall, when you combine them, still creates a style, not just a lack of style. James Harden gets a thumbs up for this beard for me. LeBron James. Keeping it on the court, let's look at LeBron James. Now, LeBron James has a very different beard shape from James Harden. It is a much more low rise, and the difference is that his top line is much, much lower. It's carved really down tight, and instead of that wild and woolly look, he keeps his very, very flawlessly groomed, nice down low, very strong lines, which looks great from the profile. Looks amazing from the side, but as soon as he's looking directly at you, you can see that it really kind of amplifies the narrowness of of his jaw. And that's a thing that you can see without a beard here. He has a very narrow bottom jaw. LeBron is a really tough one because I actually like him better with a beard, but not this beard. Instead of complementing the shape of his face, it's amplifying the shape of his face. And that is a little bit tricky because if we compare that to somebody that's maybe not on the court, maybe somebody that's sitting courtside like Drake, he has almost the exact same beard shape as LeBron James, but his face shape is different and it complements the shape better. Drake is a little wider, his chin is not quite so narrow, and so when he creates that same low rider shape that's meticulously groomed out, you can see it complements his face shape and in fact gives it a more square look. If you wanna put these two side by side, who wore it better? I think Drake's got you, LeBron. Chris Pine. Chris Pine is definitely your classic, handsome, Hollywood leading man. In 2022, Chris Pine really put this look together. He grew his hair out longer. He's got this big beard. It's got a lot of gray in it. And I think it really aged him. It really gave him a much, much older look. And I think it's really tricky to grow out a beard and your hair at the same time if you're trying to make it a style statement. Now, perfect contrast here is when we see what happens when you pull his hair back off his face, he pushes it back, it looks leaner on the sides. I know it's wearing a hoodie, but just the shape looks so much better. One of the things I usually recommend to guys is that if they wanna grow their beard out bigger, then they should make their hair cut cleaner and maybe a little shorter or more groomed. I love that he embraces how strong his gray is in the front. He's got that real tonal difference, which can be very interesting and can make your beard stand out. If you ask me, this is not Chris Pine's best look. I mean, for a role, I get it. For the coloration that he's got, he's got a very interesting looking beard. But I really believe that when you try and grow everything out all at once, you start to lose a lot. You lose your jaw shape, you lose your overall square shape, and things become kind of rounder. Without a beard, God, he's really handsome already. Leave some for the rest of us, why don't you? Donald Glover. Donald Glover is a great example of bringing out that mature aspect that a beard can give you. I think a lot of people got to know him about 10 years ago when he was on Community and he played this real boyish charm. He had a bit of a baby face, but as he got away from that role and as he went into his childish Gambino phase, I think he wanted to express more of his maturity and his sexuality, and I really think that the beard helped him do that. I think there was an evolution to Donald Glover's beard. I know he played around with a couple different shapes. Uh, it started out with kind of a rounder shape, uh, which is not always the most flattering on certain types of face shapes, especially because he has a slightly rounder face shape. But I think he's settled on more of a squared out shape now. And that squared out shape is really what's giving that amplitude to his jaw and that stronger look. So in the spirit of Donald Glover expressing his maturity, I think that a beard is a much better look for him than without. Idris Elba. 
he's such a man, isn't he? He's so masculine and he's got such a strong personality. And so when he has this beard and he keeps it nice and short and tight and embraces his salt and pepper, I think it's a great look for him. Instead of making it really edged out and look drawn on, he keeps it a little bit more natural, but still very nice and tight. This is really easy to maintain yourself at home with a pair of clippers. But what works about it for Idris Elba is it's something that he can always dress up or dress down. And it looks great both ways. I mean, Idris Elba is such an interesting character already because he's not just a Hollywood leading man, the guy's a DJ. I mean, he has so many elements to his personality and I think the really great thing about this is that beard just seems to be consistent through all of those elements. So Idris Elba's beard for me is a great big win, especially for guys that are looking to have something that they can maintain themselves at home, but still give them just that tiny bit of masculine edge. John Hamm. When it comes to some actors, they're known for having a beard. John Hamm, for me, is not one of those actors. When I picture John Hamm, it's really impossible for me to not see his clean-shaven Don Draper kind of vibe. He's such a handsome guy without facial hair, and so when you see him with facial hair, it's almost like he's wearing a costume or he's hiding or something, and it almost looks like the beard stands out quite a bit. I mean, he can definitely grow in. He can definitely wear it. It's not a bad thing on his face shape. For me, it just doesn't seem to be his style. By contrast, you take an actor like Jake Gyllenhaal, for some reason, it just seems to work with him a little better. It seems to be a little more seamless and it kind of integrates into his style a little bit better. I've seen him without one and he looks great. I've seen him with a beard, he looks fantastic. And it's not quite as much of a disconnect for me to look at Jake Gyllenhaal's beard and say that suits you as it is to look at John Hamm's beard and say that's your best look. Jake Gyllenhaal is another one of those ones where it's too close to call because he looks great without one, he looks great with one, but I love the kind of more mature look he has with a beard, so I'm gonna say with a beard. Reggie Watts. Reggie Watts has a very iconic look all his own. He's a comedian and a performer who really uses his look as part of his physical comedy. He embraces the, the craziness of his hair, the large texture of it. He wears it in all sorts of really bright and bold ways, which I think is super fun. But to do that really requires you to be able to anchor something at the bottom of your face shape. Otherwise, it just starts to look very top heavy. And so he uses his beard to kind of anchor that shape, to feel a little more natural, a little rougher, and again, very consistent with the rest of his look. This guy is absolutely hilarious and I can't picture him without a beard. I mean, let's take a picture of Reggie before he had his beard. And let's just see what the beard shape has done for his face shape. I mean, undeniable. Keanu Reeves. Oh. Keanu Reeves is like the like the Hollywood version of Jesus. You know what I mean? You can't say bad things about Keanu Reeves. It's not my favorite beard. I, I think Keanu Reeves looks best when he has something that is really tight and tailored. He looks great clean shaven. He looks great with like a little bit of stubble. You know, when he's got that kind of John Wick vibe going or a very, very short beard. Because his face shape is so narrow and because he's really lean looking, the longer the beard grows with the longer hair, it starts to kind of elongate the shape too much. So for Keanu Reeves, I love to see his beard shorter and more kind of tailored in. It's just more complimentary to his face shape. I'm gonna say without a beard. I know that's a little controversial. I just really like his face shape without a beard. I think if he was gonna wear one, keep it really short, almost stubbly. So yeah, I'm gonna say without. Well guys, that's all I've got for now. But if you wanna see some more, comment and subscribe below. If there's beards in Hollywood that you think deserve some more attention than they've got, add them to the comment section. And until then, we'll see you next time.